Hi everybody, today Rado runs through Upon a Fable, which is a brand new worker placement game um, that's on Kickstarter in April of 2013. And I'm going to be doing a run through today of a prototype, a pre release copy that's just you know printed out on paper with some cubes I grabbed from Macau over there. And um, I'm going to be, for player marks, I'm going to be using these pieces of glass art that my wife is making, these you know player pieces. Um, you know, very, very lovely player pieces. Oh, they feel so good in the hand. Just nice and smooth and, and heavy. Okay, anyway. Um, now, in this game, again, which is a prototype, so these are not final components, and I don't even have a box. In this game, we are kings and queens ruling magical fantasy fairy tale kingdoms. And we're in a competition to have the greatest kingdom in the land. And so what we've done to become the greatest kingdom is everybody has recruited a bunch of fables classic storybook fables to go out and help them collect resources, build realms, all kinds of stuff. And so in this game, well actually I should say, you know, in, in the shipping game, you know, the blue player is the princes and the yellow player is the beasts and the, you know, the green player is the dragons. You get these worker tokens that are these, these famous dragons or princes or whatever. But, um, you know, again, in this game, I'll just be using the glass art pieces to represent the fables. Now, Every turn, uh, over the course of nine turns, or rounds, I should say, although they're called stories, over the course of nine stories, we will do these nine actions. And the first one we do every time is, first thing, we unveil a new story, which I've already done. The first story of the game in this game, because these are randomized, is add a realm or upgrade a realm. And what that means is, this is a place I could send one of my fables to do an action. So, at the beginning of this game, since this was the card that came up first, I have the opportunity to add a realm or upgrade a realm, play a card, draw a card, get some magic, grab starting player, convert a wonder, or add a small realm. Okay. But I'm, I'm not going to place my workers yet because after we have unveiled a story, we rejuvenate our wonders. Now, these are the wonders of the game, these cubes. So again, although in the shipping game, they will be nice little um, you know, cardboard chits with some, with some simple art on them. No, it looks quite nice. Although actually, if you pay attention to the Kickstarter, there are some higher levels where you can get all wooden pieces for everything. Wooden dragons and princes and princesses, wooden followers and courage and hearts. It looks really, really nice, but that's you, you have to look into that yourself if you want to pay the extra for the deluxe version of the game as opposed to just the cardboard um, chit version of the game. But anyway, sorry, we are rejuvenating wonders. And what that means is we look up on the board and any of these spaces that generate wonder get refilled. And right now, at the beginning of the game, there's only one, this magic space. So we rejuvenate it to put one magic in. And over the course of the game, more and more magic will build up there. And if we were playing with more players, I'd also rejuvenate some love over here, but we're just playing a two player game. So it's just magic at the beginning. Now, third step is we perform realm abilities. Now, at the beginning of the game, Jen and I both have one realm, our home realm. It's a small realm that has no special abilities. But over the course of the game, we can create additional realms. Maybe there's the add realm and upgrade realm options. So we can add more realms over the course of the game. And if we ever upgrade them into large or epic realms, they start giving us abilities. But neither of us have those, so we're gonna skip the perform realm abilities and go on to deal the hand of fate. This happens every single turn. It's a big, big part of the game. Every player gets three cards. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take one, give one to our neighbor, and discard one. And so every turn, we have to make this choice, and sometimes it can be a really tough choice. So let's see what the cards I just drew. One I'm gonna keep, one I'm gonna to give to Jen, and one is gone. So, I got a small realm, which is nice, because you want small realms, because they let you, um, you, you can't get epic realms until you upgrade small realms to large realms. And then you can upgrade large realms. You know, start, small realms are where it all starts, so that's good. This is never after card. This is a one-time card that gives me a bonus for the rest of the game. If I ever play this, from that point on, whenever I take one or more honor from the board, I can get a castle, so I can get castles for free. And castles are the most rare resource in the game, so that's pretty nice. And then this is an epic realm, which, once I've built it, will gain me two honor every story. So, to decide which one of these, I gotta look at what cards I started with. Everybody at the beginning of the game starts with four cards. So I started with an epic realm, a small realm, a dream, or I started with two small realms, an epic realm and a dream. So, I think I don't necessarily want another small realm, because I've already got two to build. Although this one takes two hearts, and this one takes two courage to build. So, six and one half done the other, I don't think I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, this is going to be the one I discard. I don't want it for myself because I've already got some small realms. But by the same token, 
I don't want to give it to Jen because if I give this to Jen, that could start her, you know, realm expansion off really quick. And for all I know, you know, I don't know what her cards are. Maybe they, she's got a small realm, maybe she doesn't, but I'm not going to give her one. So this is the card I'm going to discard, which then leads me to wonder which card I'm going to keep for myself. I already have one Epic Realm. It'd be nice to get another, but Epic Realms are really hard to build. And so it's going to take me a long time to build this. So I think, well, that means I have to give it to Jen, and then Jen's got an Epic Realm, which whenever she builds it, but it's going to take her a while to build it. This thing is much nicer. This I could get right off the bat. So I'm going to hold on to this for myself. And then I'm going to give this Epic Realm to Jen. And uh, so, so it's just, you know, gone into Jen's hand. Now, Jen, of course, she gets to draw three cards as well. One, two, three. And that's if we won't take a look. Let me just look at them really quick so she can make a quick decision. Because she's going to give one of these to me. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, she's definitely not going to give me that. She's going to hold on to this. Or, oh, maybe she's not. Wow. Okay. What is she going to do? Okay, she doesn't want to give me any of these. No, okay, she's definitely keeping that for herself. Which means she, oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, she does not want to do it, but she's going to give me a large realm. And the reason is because the other thing she could give me was, uh, it would have been even better. So she's giving me this thing, although that's very nice for me. Because now, I've got two small realms, a large realm, and an epic realm. I got a little bit of everything. That's awesome. That's a great way to start. But presumably she kept something even better for herself and discarded the other thing. Okay, so we have now completed, we have dealt the hand of fate. Now we can start exploring the stories, which means we start placing our workers. Now, I am the first player. Oh, I should say the only other thing, at the beginning of the game, everybody starts with two magic. Okay, so I'm the first player and where am I gonna go? Well, I would like, I would like to get another worker right off the bat. So I want, what it means is I need to be able to build another, I need to be able to build one of these small realms. Now this small realm requires two love, two hearts, and this one could be two of anything. So I could build this one right away by just dumping my starting um, magic and build it. Do I want to do that? Hmm. Let's see. Or do I want to grab some more magic before it's gone? Let's see. Because there are two spaces. There's a add a small realm and add realm, which is a small realm again. So I've got two opportunities to add a small realm. So I don't have to rush and jump right into it. If there were only, if this was only the only one, I would definitely go here first before Jen got there because I wouldn't want to lose my chance to build a realm. So before I build a realm, is there something else I should do? Well, along those lines, I should think in terms of what else I want to do. I would like to play this Ever After card because it is awesome. And... Right. Oh, convert one follower to three magic. So I won't be able to do this for a while because it's going to be a while before I get a follower to be able to create three magic. See, I, this ever after is going to take three magic and I'm going to probably use all my magic up to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and grab some more magic. That's my first move. And now it's Jen's turn. So I've got three magic. And let me look at what she's got so she can make her decision about what she's going to do. Okay, she's got that. She's got that. Those are all free. Okay, she's got that. All right. Right, okay. She is going to convert a wonder. And she does it immediately. And what that means is she can take any cube she's got and convert it into anything else. You know, even, you know, the, like the lowest value magic, she could immediately convert it into a castle if she wanted. But she's going to take one of her magic and convert it into love. Love, love. It's the easiest thing to do. All right. So she has, you know, created a magic love. All right. Back to me. Back to my turn. I've got one more worker. I'm going to go ahead and add a realm. And it's this guy, this small realm, which I have to give up two, four, and I'll give up two of the three magic I've got, and I've now created a new realm. What that means is I have added a new worker, a new fable to my realm. So I've got three workers I can start placing right off the bat because I don't have to wait till next turn. I can, I'll be able to place this right away. Now, back to Jen, her turn. She is going to take her last worker, and coincidentally, come up here and add a realm herself. She's got a small realm that requires a magic and a heart. And that's why she converted one of her magics to love. So she spends both of these. Oops. Our, and she gets a new worker as well. Okay. Now, we've, we've just gotten a worker, so we're going to keep placing. And now i got to see. For these other cards. Well, the last thing I can do is I can grab. I am starting player, but I could hold on to it. If I don't want Jen to take starting player for me, I can go ahead and take it. Or I can grab a card, or I could play a card. 
But I don't really have any good cards to play. In fact, I, yeah, I don't have any cards I can play. So I think I'm gonna draw a card and hopefully get something nice. Zoink, what I get. Oh, I got a large realm. Oh, that's actually really nice. So I've got, I've got, you know, I've got these large realms that I'll be able to turn my small realms into large realms. So that means I'm basically going to be doing a lot of construction over the coming turns. I see. For Jen's last turn, does she want to, does she want to play a card or does she want to grab starting player? She has three options here: play a card, grab starting player, or she could pass. If you ever have your last worker and you just don't want to do anything on the board, you can pass. And what that means is you send the worker to Earth. Over here, this whole space is Earth. Where all the magical wonders of our fairy world come from, they come from Earth. So you could send one of your workers to Earth to grab some magic and bring it into your realm, you know, by hand. So if she wants another magic, you could do that. But I think instead, she is going to grab starting player. She wants to have starting player for next turn. Okay, so that was the end of exploring the stories. Next, action six, we play and discard our fate cards. Every turn, in addition to using this to play Fate cards, um, which is, you say, Dreams and Ever After cards, in addition to playing them there, we also get the opportunity every turn to play them on Phase 6. Now, so I cannot play any of my realms. The only way I can build tho do those is to build them on those cards up there. But I've got a Dream and I've got an Ever After. This Dream is free. So I could play it right now, but unfortunately what it does is converts one follower to free magic and I have no followers yet, so I'm not gonna play this. This Ever After, I would love to play it, because once I play it, it stays in my possession for the rest of the game. And for the rest of the game, whenever I take one or more honor, I get a castle for free. But unfortunately, I need three magic and I've only got one. So, this whole turn, I'm basically gonna have to skip. I can't do anything. Let's see if Jen's gonna do anything. She, okay, is gonna play, she's gonna have a dream. Remember, you get to play one dream card, and or one ever after card. You can't play two, you can play, you can play one or the other or both or neither. Jen had a dream, she's gonna play it, and in her dream, she gained a follower and all other players gained one magic. So this gets discarded, and in, because of Jen's magical dream, she got a follower and I got a magic, which is awesome, because it means I'm getting closer to doing what I need to do. Now, she's gonna play anything else. Oh, okay, yes. She's also going to play the first ever after. And she got lucky because this one is free. So it doesn't cost her anything to play it. And so she's going to play it. It comes over here and it's permanent for the rest of the game. Whenever she takes one or more honor from the storyboard, she gets a love as well. So love and honor go hand in hand in Jen's kingdom. So that'll be very, very nice for her. So she's going to be want in the future. She's going to want to be trying to grab honor whenever she can so she can get free love at the same time. Now, part of this is play and discard fate cards. If you have, at the end of this phase, more than four cards, you have to discard. And I've got six. Zen's only got three left because she actually played one. I have to get rid of some of these cards now, and that's heartbreaking because I want all of these cards, but I have to get rid of two of them. I'm not going to get rid of this because I'm pretty close to being able I have two magic. I only need one more, and I could do that. So I'm definitely holding on to that. Convert one follower to three magic. It's going to be a while before I get a follower. So I think I'm discarding that one, and I have to discard one more. Oh, I want to keep... Uh, I definitely want to keep the small realm so I can get another worker. So I think I'll discard. I think I'll discard this large realm because getting two courage is going to be a bit trickier than getting one magic and one courage because magic is easier to get. So I'm going to discard this. All right, and now I am down to four cards. Well, I would have loved to have kept them all. Okay, we have played and discarded our fate cards, and now we empower the realms. However, we only do this on turns three, six, and nine. We're on turn one. When we hit turn three, we have to empower our realms. And what that means is we have to pay magic to, for every realm we've got. At this point, I've got two realms. I have to pay two magic. Jen's got two realms. She has to pay two magic. If I had ever upgraded my small realm to a large realm, now I would have to pay three magic. Um, one, two, three. If I ever upgrade this large realm to an epic realm, I would have to, in this case, pay four. One, two, three, four. If at the end of turns three, six, and nine, you cannot pay your empowerment. If you cannot pay your empowerment fees, what happens is the kingdom, or this realm that doesn't get paid, falls into a deep sleep. And you know, this is the symbol for sleep, a very, very nice little uh, moon thing. And at the end of the turn, when your workers come home, when your worker comes and lands on this thing, he also, or your fable, falls into a deep sleep. And what that means is you've lost your worker until they wake up. And it takes one turn to lose one of these. So the, the longer they're asleep, the longer it'll take before you get them back. 
So you always want to be very careful in this game to, um, so what's the third thing I did? Oh, I had a small one. You always want to be very careful to keep aside enough magic because at the end of every third turn, it's payday. However, right now, we don't have to pay anything. So instead, we move on to number eight, intensify magic. Every space that was ignored, that nobody went to, gets magic on it. And so nobody played a card. So now it'll be a little bit more attractive to play a card in the future. And then finally, the last thing, we return and awaken our fables. So, Jen get, brings all of her fables back. And in a two-player game, in your home realm, you get to hold two. Normally, you only get to hold one per realm. No matter how big the realm is, it's only one per work, worker per realm. But in a two-player game, two of them can be on your home realm. And let's see, and I bring mine back. And at this point, if in a previous turn, say this realm had, you know, had, had so let's see, at this, at this point, they would wake and I'd get him back. So that's why it says return and awaken fables. However, I hadn't done that. All right, so that was the end of the first turn. We continue on, we go to the second turn. The first thing we do is we reveal, oh, and then we rejuvenate the wonders, which means we fill them all back up. So there's a magic over here and over here now, there's a magic, a love, and a courage just waiting to be snagged. Then we perform realm abilities. Nobody has any realm abilities yet, but remember, when I get my large realm built, um, every story, I will get to, let's see, if the player to the right has more honor, which right now that's not the case, nobody has any more honor than anybody else, has more honor than you, you can take one to kind of even the playing field. But nobody, neither Jen nor I have any large or epics, so we skip the perform realm, and now we deal the hand of fates again. So we get three more cards, what's it gonna be, what do I get? I've got another large realm, which requires three magic, which might be, yeah, that's gonna be easier to build than the current large realm I've got, so I might wanna hold on to that. I get an ever after, this is a permanent thing. It requires a follower, and so far there are no followers on the board. Although Jen earned a follower for the dream she had. But anyway, this ever after, once each story you can select any add small realm space. Okay, so if you run out of space and you can't go to the add small realm, this lets you go to a small realm even if you don't normally get to, so that's nice. And yeah, because space does get tight. Ever after, when scoring at the end of the game, gain one bonus point. Okay, so this is just an extra point at the end of the game. This is just one point. I don't want to give Jen one point, so I'm definitely not going to give her this. Do I want it for myself? I think I might. But I want this large realm too, because I'd be able, it's going to be so much easier to upgrade because mm, large realm or an extra point. And whichever one I, mm. oh, and then, but which one do I not, which one do I give to Jen? These are all nice. I don't want to give one to her. I don't want this because I don't have any followers, but Jen does. So she could actually do that. So that's not great to give to her. I don't want to give her a large realm. I'm definitely not giving her that. And I don't want to give her a point. It's just one point though. But I shouldn't just give her one point. All right, I'm going to give her this. And we'll see if she, if she, if she uses her follower that she's earned to play it. So this is what I give her. Maybe she'll play it, maybe she won't. Large realm or ever after card. See, if I don't have an Ever After card I can play, then I, I basically lost a free turn. Because every turn I get to, I get one free chance to play an Ever After card. And currently, I don't have any Ever After cards. This will let, or no, I have one, but it costs me three to play. If I take this, both of these things cost three magic. I won't have enough magic to do both of them. So I shouldn't take this, because then I couldn't do that. But if I take this, then I would only get one free, so I won't be able to play that. Oh. Okay, I'm going to play the character. This large realm will go. Because I do have another large realm. Maybe I'll be able to get some courage. Probably not, though. But, ah. Oh. See, because that's the thing. There is, there's one courage on the board. But remember, Jen grabbed first player. So I guarantee she's going to grab that. If I don't grab that, I will not be able to get a large realm out this turn. If I take this, I would be able to. But if I take this, I can get a... Oh, there's just no winning here. Okay, to echo that. I'm going to discard the large realm. I took the ever after and I gave Jen the other ever after. All right, and now Jen has to go through the exact same choice. And these choices can be gut-wrenching. Um, you know, sometimes they're really easy and sometimes they're very tough. Let's see what Jen got here. Oh, well, she's definitely holding onto this. You're going to see it soon. She got a small realm that only requires one follower, which she'll be able to play super easy, which means she probably won't be using the thing that I gave her. So, all right, and then see what she also got that and that. She's definitely, oh, no, she can't take these. So she, just, right, does she want to give me a, a, a small realm that's easy to build? She doesn't know. For all she knows, I have no small realms. And if she gives me this, she's just feeding me and helping my game. So she doesn't want to give me this. 
but there's Ever After. Whenever you take uh, two or more magic from the storyboard, you gain one honor as well. So that's really nice. She doesn't want to give me that. I don't think she's going to give me the small realm. She'll give me this Ever After. Even though this Ever After is so easy to play because it's free. She's going to give me this though, because right now there's only, you know, there's only one magic in any of these spaces. I would have to pick up two magic to be able to use this card. So this is what she gave me. All right, and so I've got my six cards and she's got five cards. All right, we have completed uh, the ha our fans of Fate of Indelt and now we start exploring. Jen is first player, boom, immediately grabs all those goodies. Um, one love, one honor, and one magic. That's the benefit of being first player. And also, remember this ever after she played, whenever you take one or more honor from the storyboard, you gain one love as well. She just grabbed an honor, so that means love and honor go together. In her kingdom, she got a free love. <laughs> just like that. Okay, my first placement. And I'm like, oh, well I would have liked that. Okay, so what I wanna do is, if I could get one courage, I'd be able to get this large realm out and upgrade it, and then for the rest of the game, I'd be able to collect honor if, I, if Jen's got more honor than me. And right now, she does. She's ahead of me on honor. So I could build, if I convert one of my magics to an honor, I could then build this realm, this uh, large realm. On the other hand, I want to get this small realm out, but to do that, I need two hearts. So I could get one heart, but I would not have enough. So I don't think I'm going to build either. Well, I could build that large realm. Yeah, I think I will. Okay, so I'm going to convert a wonder, which I'll take one of my magic wonders and convert it to a a um, honor wonder. All right, Jen's turn. What's she going to do? Right, she is going to. Oh, okay. All right, she is going to. She want. Remember that? Remember I showed you. She she drew this small. This is what she wants to build. So she's got to place a worker. She can place it here, which only lets her add a small realm, but she'll place it over here. She knows that she does not have the chance to do an upgrade this turn, but I might. She doesn't know. And in fact, that is true. Um, so she's going to come over here, thereby blocking this space. And in doing it, she spends her follower to get, uh, you know, the, the follower to recruit another fable. So she'll grab this guy. She now has four workers in the game. Okay. And now I say no, because remember, I just did that conversion, so I was going to be able to do this large realm. Uh, but that's an upgrade, and Jen just took the only upgrade space. If she'd gone to the small realm, I'd be able to go there, but she played smart, and so now I, now my whole turn, i got to start thinking about other stuff to do. Um, let's see. Well, there's not that much to do left. I could play a card. I could play, oh, yes, I could, oh, I could play a card, which will give me some magic. And if I get enough magic, I'd be able to play this Ever After card, which is really nice. So I think, yeah, I'm going to play a card, which gives me a magic, because it built up. And so I, that means I can either play Ever After or, see, here's all my Ever Afters, or Dreams. I have no Dreams, but I do have an Ever After. So, and both of these are free. So am I gonna play the one that whenever you take two or more magic, or am I gonna take the, which Jen gave me, or um, when scoring at the end of, so if I play this right now, I've, I get a free point at the end of the game. I'll just play this. I've just guaranteed a free point at the end of the game. Okay, Jen's turn again. She's got two more workers. Let's see. I think she's gonna hold on to start player because you can see how powerful it is to just keep on grabbing this. And I'm thinking maybe I should have grabbed star player instead of playing a card. I probably should have. But say lovey. All right, back to me, back to my turn. I'm going to grab a magic. So now I've got three, which means I'm gonna have enough to do this Ever After card. Um, let's see. And now Jen, she's got one more worker. What she wanna do? She can add another small realm if she's got it. She can draw a card, or she can just send it to Earth and get some magic. I think she'll just do that. She's gonna grab some magic because she's a little bit low on magic. Okay, and that was the end of Exploring the stories. Now we play and discard fate cards. Let's see. Jen's first, so she will do it first. And which one's she gonna do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, she can't remember the one I gave her. She can't play that because it requires a follower, and she already got rid of her follower. So she's gonna play this other one, which is free. It's a free one. And what it is, whenever you take one or more followers from the storyboard, you gain an honor. Now, there are no followers on the storyboard as yet, but later on, in the second book, one of these three stories will be collect a follower. Or no, maybe it's this one. 
I forget. Yeah, it might be that one. I think it's that one actually. So she knows in a little bit she'll start being able to get followers and then this thing will pay. All right. So she has done her freebie play. She's not going to play any dreams because she doesn't have any. And I don't have any dreams either, but I do have another Ever After. Oh, but wait, more importantly, I'm going to play my really expensive Ever After because I saved up all that magic. Right. So I pay it. And now, whenever I take one or more honor from the storyboard, I get one castle as well. And a castle is the most valuable thing in the game. So I'm definitely going to want to start picking up honor. But unfortunately, there's only one place to pick up honor at the moment, and Jen's probably going to do it again next turn because she is first player. All right, so we have finished playing and discarding. Let's see, I have four. Jen's got, okay, so we don't have to discard any. Now we empower realms. We're on turn two, not turn three. We intensify magic. So every place that didn't get anything, didn't get visited, gets a magic. And now everybody comes home. My three workers and Jen's four workers including the one that went to Earth. Okay, and now let's reveal the third story. And this is the place where workers can start getting picked up. Okay, which is gonna be actually gonna make an interesting choice for Jen. Um, she can get a heart, a purple, or a courage, and some magic, or she could go after that follower, or, let's see, don't forget there's that magic that shows up. Oops, not love. Exciting and new, it's magic, okay. So we've unveiled a new story, unveiled a new story, we've rejuvenated our wonders, we perform our realm abilities. So far nobody has a, a realm ability yet. And then we deal cards, one, two, three, what will it be? One, two, three, something nice, something nice. Oh, a dream. See, when you give each, you give each player one magic, so if I give Jen one magic, I'll get two followers, that's amazing. Now in a two, in a two player game, obviously that's very, very powerful. Because I was only, I only have to give up one magic to give two followers. In a four player game, I'd have to give up three magic. So this card, you know, it, it has a very different meaning depending on how many players are in the game. So I might want to hold on to that because we're a two, two a game. A large realm though, or an epic realm. I want this dream, I do want this dream. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that. So now what am I going to give Jen? I'm going to give her an epic realm. Because I give her, I give her a large realm, it's, oh, oh, ah, no, 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 no. I'm going to give her a large realm, which means she'll have an opportunity to grab one of these to, to upgrade. But there's a reason I'm doing it. Because this large realm requires, come on, focus, you, requires a worker and she doesn't have one, that's going to make her much more likely to want to go for the worker first thing which means I would have a chance of grabbing that. So I'm actually going to tempt her to give me a chance to get what I need. So this is what I'm giving her, and the Epic Realm gets discarded. Now let's see what Jen gets, Uno Dos Trace. What is she gonna choose? Um, I think she'll hold on to that, and she will, what is this? Uh, okay. Okay, she's gonna give me this, because that's not a really exciting one. And she's discarding an Epic Realm. And so she's given me an Ever After that costs four of any cube. And once each story, I can select any space that's already claimed. So no one can, I mean, I can go anywhere I want. I can't get blocked out, but it's expensive. But once I've done this, it's true for the rest of the game. Every turn, I will get one guaranteed placement, which means if I have this, it's not as important that I get to go first anymore. So anyway, those, we've uh, dealt our hands of fate and now we explore Jen is first and she does have to decide. See, it would have been a no-brainer. Of course she was going to grab all these resources. But if she knows if she does that, I'll grab the worker. Or not the worker, the follower. And if she grabs that follower, she could build that large realm I gave her. So she is, in fact, going to grab the follower. I played it brilliantly. And which is, yeah, oh, goodness gracious, I grabbed all that stuff. Okay, happy days. I finally got some stuff. Now, hold on a second. So Jen grabbed a follower. And remember, whenever she has this thing. Whenever you take one or more follower, you get one honor. So Jen got an honor for free for taking that follower. So she got two for one. So it was, it was a good move for her to make. Let's see, and what do I get? Um, whenever you take one or more honor, which I just did from the storyboard, I get one castle. So I just got a castle. Okay. And, um, right, so we both place worker. Now it's Jen's turn again. What else is she gonna do? All right, she wants to build that realm, which means, okay, she is gonna upgrade a realm before the opportunity is lost. And it's the one I gave her so that I could get what I needed. It costs her one love and one follower. So there goes a follower and there goes a love. And she has turned her small realm into a large realm. And now for the rest of the game, at the beginning of every turn, if, if I, if the player to the right has more, if I have more magic than her, she gets one of my magic. 
So maybe it'll, I mean, right now she's got more magic than me anyway. So that was her action. And now my action, I think I am going to, see those are all gone. Do I want to add a small realm? I do, but I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I think I'm going to draw a card. And what did I get? I got an Ever After. During each empowerment, um, oh my goodness, I really want that. Okay, that was a really great draw. I'm very happy about that. I see, and of course, I got some magic for my troubles. And now Jen, oh, oh my. Jen's in a little bit of trouble. Yes, she is. Wow, she's in big trouble. Okay, she's definitely gonna, oh no, no, she's fine, she's fine, she's fine, folks. She's gonna come here and grab this magic. I'll say why, I thought she was in trouble in a second. You'll see why, because we're about to end the turn. She grabbed the magic. Now my last worker placement, I don't have any small realms I can play. Why? Oh, see, I could almost get this one out, but I need two hearts. I have one heart, I have one love. If I had two workers, I could convert something to a heart or a love, and then I could add a small realm. But I don't have enough time, I've only got one worker left. So I think I'm gonna take starting player back. It is mine. And now Jen's got one more worker, she has more realms than me. And with her last realm, she is going to send it to Earth and get another magic. Okay, now continuing on. We've explored the stories. We now play and discard fate cards. I am now the first player, I just grabbed it, so I get to go first. And I think I will have a dream. Oh, will I? Yes, oh. All right, shoot, this is bad timing. I would like to play this dream, wherein I would, all I have to do, remember this was a really nice one, all I have to do is give Jen one magic and I would get two followers, that's an amazing return. But if I do that, I will only have one magic left. It's payday. I need to have a magic for each one of my realms. And if I don't, one of them will fall asleep. So I can't, I can't play this right now because I don't have enough magic. So I won't play my dream, but I can also play an Ever After. I don't have enough resources for this one, so. Whenever you take two or more magic from the storyboard, that one's free. And this one requires a castle and a follower. I don't have a follower yet. So I'm just gonna play this one because it's free. It's my third ever after. Although it won't really do any good until I pick up two magic in one turn. Okay, now Jen's turn, what's she gonna play? Oh, she would love to play this. Convert two magic into one honor, but she's gonna need all her magic to power hers. So, she gonna play? no, and she, so she, she can't afford to play anything either. So we're both skipping this turn. Well, no, I got one card out, she didn't. So I got a little, I gave him out a little bit. And do we have to discard? Jen's got four cards, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I gotta discard cards now. Definitely not discarding that. Oh, during empowerment phase. Oh, this makes it cheaper. I don't have to pay as much on payday. But I really want this. Oh my goodness, I have to get rid of two of these cards. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this one Jen gave me, because it's very expensive. I still want my small and epic and large, so. I'm gonna get rid of the Ever After. Oh, that hurts, that's a really good Ever After. Okay, so I've discarded down to four. And discard. Now, in Power Realms, we have to do it, we're on turn three. So, I've got two tiny realms, which requires two magic. So I've empowered them, and therefore, neither of them would have had to fall asleep. Jen, she's got two tiny realms, they require two, or they require one apiece. She's also got her upgraded large realm. That requires two. She just barely had enough. And if she didn't, she would have had, if she didn't, if she, say she only had three, right? She would have had to pay all her small realms first, and then she tried to play her medium realm, she only has one, and because she was short one, she would put one cube on there to indicate that this realm will be asleep for one turn. If she had been short two, she would have had to pay two cubes, and this realm would have been asleep for two turns. But fortunately, she had just enough, everything was fine, and we have empowered our realms. Now we intensify magic. Where did we not go? We didn't go there or there. And then everybody comes home. Three. And Jen, fortunately, nobody comes, including the one she went, sent to Earth. That's why she went to Earth, because she desperately needed that last magic. I, I would, thought she was not gonna have enough magic to pay for her, her realm, but she sent one to Earth as a last ditch effort, and she got what she needed. Okay, and that was the end of the first of three books. So actually, the only thing I'm gonna show is we start the next turn and you'll notice there's a card on top of the card. Before I reveal it, I, we have either a blessing or a curse. Let's see what it is. It's a blessing. All right, Whenever, whichever player has the fewest honor gains one magic and one love. And oh my gosh, look at that. We both have two honor. So nobody gets this blessing. 
Yeah, you know, all these blessing curse cards are nice little catch up mechanics, but since we're both tied on honor right now, nobody gets a magic or love. Arg! Okay, well, anyway, so that's gone. And then what's revealed? It is the super conversion, where you can convert any one wonder to a whole bunch of stuff. You can convert one magic to three magic, or you could convert one love into two honor, etc., etc. So this is a much better version than the straight one to one conversion. And um, then we rejuvenate our wonders, of course. There's one two, three, which is going to be awesome because, of course, I have starting players, so I'm going to be able to grab that. There's a worker. Jen's probably going to grab that. There's another magic that comes out. There's a lot of little magic, but there's not big magics built up. And now we can perform realm abilities, and Jen actually has one. I don't. But remember, every story, if the player to her right has more magic, take one. However, neither Jen nor I have any magic, so this doesn't happen. Um, but if I'd had more magic, she would get it. So I always have to remember that. I don't want to ever get more magic than Jen. And then we deal the hand of fate, draw three cards, etc. Now, I think I'm going to stop there because I pretty much demoed most of the stuff. But as you can imagine, as the game continues through one, two, three, four, five more turns, you know, we get more workers, the, a lot of more powers come out, uh, we get a lot more cards that give us unique abilities that make, that give us completely different goals we're trying to shoot for. And then at the end of the game, after we pay off the final time, we do our final scoring, where you score points for how much magic, love, honor, followers, and castles you get. Also, you get score points for every ever after you played. Even if they never did anything for you, they're still worth points. You also get points for the number of small realms, large realms, and epic realms. So this is a game where you can score points for everything. So you really, well, you want to do it all, but you can't because the board is so tight. So that was, let me turn this around. Once Upon a Fable, and if you guys would like to watch a little bit more, I'm going to play a few more rounds so you can maybe see a bit more action. Go on ahead and push the button that's appeared on screen for extended playthrough or extended run through. That's if you're on a browser. If you're on a PlayStation 3 or an iPad or a, a, a pad, you won't see the buttons. But anyway, you can follow that from the show links if you'd like to see more gameplay. Alternatively, you can push the other button and go directly to my final thoughts to hear what I think about the game, if you're interested. Although, quite frankly, you shouldn't need to hear it because I think you have a pretty good idea of exactly how this plays and you should know whether it's a game for you and whether you'd want to back it on Kickstarter. Um, also in the show notes, of course, is a link to the Kickstarter video. And uh, if you guys would like to go find out more about the game, including how you can upgrade and get the really, really cool pieces, you can go on ahead and follow that link. Either way, um, I will guys give you guys five, Four seconds, three seconds to choose, two, one. Have you made your choice? I hope so, because I'm saying bye. Bye-bye.